Hey everyone, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch and welcome back to another episode of Practical Parallelism in C++. So today we're going to continue on with learning about, you know, parallel algorithms, uh, except this time instead of implementing Gaussian elimination with p-threads, we're going to look at how do we do it with this other uh, new interface for parallelism that we looked at the past couple of videos, which is uh, MPI. So again, you know, the big difference between p-threads and MPI is that one of them is a shared memory interface and the other one is a message passing uh, interface. And so what we mean by that is we have to explicitly, you know, copy data uh, back and forth. We can't just share pointers um, and we have to do all this, you know, very direct communication. So let's see how we implement something like Gaussian elimination, uh, but in MPI instead. Okay, so let's look at GE MPI naive.cpp. So uh, again, we're going to start uh, and we're going to gradually build up our optimization. So with the pthreads one, we started out with a block mapping where we just mapped the blocks of rows um, to each of the uh, threads. In this case, it will be to each of the processes. Uh, and then we'll move on to the next, uh, in the next iteration of this, we'll look at a cyclic striped mapping, uh, but an MPI. So uh, let's see what we did here. So uh, we'll start out with a very small problem size just so we can visualize the output. Uh, before we move on to a bigger problem size. So we'll just do an 8 by 8 matrix. Uh, we'll create some variables for timing. So we're, we'll record the start time, the end time, and we'll compute a total time. Uh, then again, we want to keep track of, you know, which rank each process is, the total number of ranks. Uh, and then we'll also we'll, we'll initialize our MPI execution environment. We'll figure out what our rank is within this uh, communicator. And then we'll also get the communicator size, so how many ranks are in the communicator. Okay, and then the next thing we're going to do is similar to the uh, pthreads uh, implementation. We'll figure out how many rows belong to each process. So each process will get the same number of rows. So in this case, um, oh, we got a typo here. Let's fix that. Um, so in this case, you know, if we have eight threads, or sorry, if we have eight, an eight by eight matrix, then that means, and if we launch say two processes then each process will get uh, four rows, right? So four plus four is eight, right? Eight total rows of the matrix. Uh, so it's a little bit different. So in the pthreads one, we did this big loop and we built everything into a loop. Um, here, we're going to do something a little bit differently because uh, we have this synchronization based upon these messages that are getting sent back and forth where, you know, we explicitly have to wait for messages um, instead of saying using barriers or uh, uh, mutex locks. So um, over here, what we'll do is uh, we'll start out by just spreading out the work. So um, we have a little bit of redundant code here, but you know we really don't care. What we really care about the performance of is the inner loop, right? So we don't care about you know the one-time cost of sending out data to all the different processes. So we're not even timing yet. So um, we don't have to directly send a message, you know, to every single process um, within the communicator. There's actually a convenient command that we can do that with, and that's this MPI scatter. And all MPI scatter does, it says, you know, I want to send data from some matrix. So what we'll do is we'll create a matrix that's n by n. We'll initialize it with the helper function that we've used in other videos. Uh, and then I'll have a sub matrix, right? And for that, I'll allocate only the space for the rows that I need. So remember, we're not sharing pointers, so you know there's no reason to allocate you know a full matrix for every other process. Every other process is only going to be given a couple of rows, um, which will be n times the number of rows, where number of rows is what we calculate right here. And so what MPI scatter does is it will take off chunks from this matrix and it will send it out to each other process. So in this case, we've got uh, we've got matrix, and then we want to send n times number of rows elements of MPI float type. So that's basically what we're sending. And then uh, on the receive side of things, they'll go into sub matrix. Again, n times number of rows is the number of elements that are all of MPI float type. And then there's something called the root. So the root will be the actual one doing the scatter operation. So only, only uh, process zero will actually be sending everything. Everyone else will be receiving. So you know, you know, MPI scatter isn't you know just we had a very explicit you know send and receive for messages, but with scatter, 
uh, that it's denoted by whoever is the root. And then it'll be in the communicator MPI com world. So at this point, everybody's synchronized and everybody has their data. So now we can actually begin uh, the Gaussian, the actual Gaussian elimination. So what we'll do is first thing we'll, uh, the first thing is we'll allocate space for a row. So because we can't pass pointers, every time we do say a normalization on a row, and we have to send it down so that everyone else can eliminate using that row, uh, we'll have to explicitly send it in a message. And we'll use something similar to scatter, but not quite. Uh, so scatter is unique as in it will piece off pieces of the matrix. So um, in the case of scatter, you know, the first say four rows will get sent to one process, the next four rows of the matrix will get sent to another process. But in the case of this row, I want the same row sent everywhere. So we'll use a different function for that that we'll talk about in a little bit. But like I said, we'll start the time here. And so the only person that will start the time is rank zero. Um, we'll just use that uh, just for simplicity. So then what we'll do is uh, we'll, we'll basically split our code into two chunks. We'll split our code into what are the uh, the receivers doing. So these are going to be all of the later ranks who are receiving rows to start eliminating with. And then we'll have uh, another block of code for the uh, sender ranks. So this is going to be the current rank that is doing the normalization and sending that row out. So what do the receivers do? So the receivers have to wait, uh, wait for a broadcast. So an, uh, broadcast is kind of like scatter, but instead of sending you know, chunks of something, you know, like a chunk of a matrix and another chunk of a matrix, uh, scatter um, or M uh, MPI broadcast sends the same value uh, to everyone, right? So in this case, we're just sending a row, right? So it'll be, um, in this case, uh, because these are receivers, um, it'll, what determines whether you're a receiver or a sender with a broadcast is the exact same thing as does for the scatter command up here, which is just the root. Except this time the root depends on which row we're on, because which row we're on, um, the rows are going to be mapped to different ranks, right? And so we can calculate that pretty easily by dividing i by the number of rows. So you know i zero through three. Uh, in this case, where we have eight, uh, where we have eight total rows, and we have you know let's say we launch two processes. You know, zero through three will all be divided by num rows, which will be equal to four. So that'll round down to zero, right? So rank zero will be the one broadcasting. So it will be the root. And then uh, everyone else will be receiving. And then likewise, later on, uh, rank one will be the one broadcasting after we hit row four and onward. So um, what all this does is all the receivers will uh, get row which we allocated right here, it will get filled with in elements sent from whoever the root is. And then what we'll do is we'll just, you know, for all the rows that are assigned to this rank, just like the other Gaussian elimination implementations, we'll just eliminate uh, whatever was in the same column as the pivot for all of the rows belong that belong to this rank. And so that's all we're doing here. It's the exact same operation as the other two implementations or three if you include the serial implementation of Gaussian elimination. So um, nothing new in this part. The only thing that's new is this broadcast. So that's how we actually get the row. We can't just pass a pointer. We have to actually have it sent to us. So now let's look at what the senders do. Right, so the senders do, uh, it starts out doing exactly the same thing as you know the normal you know, p-thread or serial Gaussian elimination will be, you know, if it's a sender, that means we know that it's going to be, uh, uh, the sender is going to uh, be the one doing the normalization for all of its rows now, right? So it'll go through all of its rows from i equals zero, while i is less than num rows, i plus plus. And what it will do is it will go ahead and figure out, you know, what the pivot that it is supposed to work on is based upon its rank, right? So we know that uh, the rank of a specific um, a process determines, you know, which rows it gets mapped, uh, just because we're doing this block mapping. So we're, you know, you know, block say uh, or say rank zero in our case, uh, in the simple case, we'll get allocated rows zero through three, right? So it knows to go through zero through three and do pivots zero through three, and then uh, rank one knows to do uh, pivots four through seven. 
So all the way up to here, um, it's exactly the same, right? So we're just eliminating uh, or we're just normalizing, right? With that same optimization uh, where we skipped the, the last division because we know that you know we're normalizing so it'll be set equal to one. So then where it becomes a little bit different is we have to do another broadcast, right? So, you know, all of these uh, ranks are waiting. They're still waiting for all of their, um, all of the previous ranks rows to get sent down so they can uh, do those eliminations. And so they're waiting for this broadcast specifically, right? So uh, in this case, you know, this rank is the one sending the broadcast, right? And so what we'll do is we'll just copy, you know, the specific row that we normalized from sub matrix. We'll copy that into this row right here, right? That we allocated above, and then we'll we'll copy, you know, in time size of bytes, so just in elements that are floats. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and broadcast that, and you know, like I said, that'll get sent from uh, from this rank, uh, the one that's doing the sending, and there'll only be one doing sending at at a time, right? Because the rows are only mapped, um, each block of row is only mapped to one rank. Okay, so this will broadcast it out, but you know this rank still needs to do its own eliminations, right? So it'll have more rows assigned to it. So if it, if this is say rank zero and it just did the normalization for row zero, it still has to do the elimination for rows one, two, and three, uh, if we've launched two processes. So that's what it does here. Um, all it does is you know the exact same thing that we've seen before it will go ahead and do the elimination. Biggest change here is we've now split receivers and senders into two different loops and only the senders will be in this loop and only the receivers will be in this loop. But there is a deadlock problem that we have to worry about here. So, you know, like I said, or, or I think I said, so broadcast, this is going to be a synchronous operation, right? So, you know, we need to make sure that, you know, everybody gets this broadcast before we continue. So even the ranks that are finished, these will still have to acknowledge that a broadcast, you know, occurred. So that's what we do in this loop right here. So this is just to prevent any kind of deadlock. So, you know, if I'm, let's, let's go back to our simple example. We have two processes um, and eight total uh, and an eight by eight matrix. So, you know, the first four rows, they'll all do their, you know, normalization and elimination, and then they'll be done, right? So, it, you know, the second rank is on to doing its normalization and uh, elimination for its rows, but, you know, nothing gets sent back in Gaussian elimination. It only propagates downward. Um, but we still need to, you know, take care of this MPI broadcast because you know rank one is going to be in here doing an MPI broadcast rank zero still exists um, so it still has to um, acknowledge this MPI broadcast and so we'll see how we can get rid of this uh, when we do the cyclic striped mapping because this is really you know st stemming from the fact that we've got an uneven balance of work uh, between the processes and then what we'll do is by the time we hit this barrier so we'll just do a quick barrier here just to make sure everybody's you know in line at the same time and this is where everybody finishes, right? So again, you know, first you're a receiver, so you're just receiving things. Then finally you become a sender, then you're done, and then you're waiting right here in this for loop. And then once everybody's done, everybody gets to this barrier. So um, then after that, all we'll do is we'll just stop the time. So we've done the inner loop part, the actual Gaussian elimination. The only thing left is that we've got to put our matrix back together. So our matrix is spread out a bunch uh, across a bunch of processes right now. So we'll use MPI gather, which works exactly like scatter, except in the opposite direction. So in this case, um, we'll take from every single rank sub matrix, we'll take n times the number of rows uh, elements. So this will just be the number of rows assigned to each rank, which will be the same as the number of uh, elements inside of the sub matrix. And then they'll all be floats. And then what we'll do is we'll stitch those all together inside of matrix, uh, which will be our an allocated in by in matrix. And then we want to take again. Uh, so this is this could get a little bit confusing. So in matrix, we're still taking, you know, in times num rows at a time. We're not taking the entire matrix from every other rank. 
So you know this this value right here after you know where we're copying into. So we're copying into matrix. This value right here, it's not going to be an in by in matrix. This is still specifying how many elements we're taking from every other rank. And we're taking floats and then we specify the root. So who is actually gathering this together? Uh, in this case, it will be rank zero. Um, and then of course the communicators, we're just using the default one in PI com world. And then we'll go ahead and finalize because we're done with MPI at this point. So then the only thing left to do is to print out our result and print out a time. So let's go ahead and see how this works. So we'll use MPI C++ dash O G E MPI naive. G -E, there we go. So here we have it. And now all we need to do is run this, right? So we'll run it MPI run. Uh, we'll select number of processors. Let's use two and then we'll run the application. There we go. All right, so it looks like we did it pretty quick. So this is a simple eight by eight matrix, right? And we did this with two processes or yeah, so this was split with two processes. So these will end up getting kind of mapped to different cores most likely. Um, and this was done in 7.89 times 10 to the negative fifth seconds. So then we can even scale this up, right? So all we need to scale up is the size of the matrix. Um, we don't need to scale up uh, uh, the threads inside the program itself because we externally uh, specify that with that dash np command, right? So we'll go ahead and compile it and we'll run it again, right? There we go, right? Uh oh, let's actually get rid of the print. So this only took 0.8 seconds. Uh, let's get rid of the print though, uh, just so for, for clarity. Oh, we don't have it open. Oh. That's the binary. There we go. Right. So let's take the print out of here. There we go. And we'll go ahead and compile it again. We'll run it again. All right. So 0 0.81 se uh, 811 seconds. We can even add more processes if we want. So you know dash np equals four. Now we get you know point four, three seconds. And then again, you know, the more we do this, we get diminishing returns, right? So, you know, it, it, once we start launching eight processes, it takes longer because remember we're, you know, just like we have synchronization overheads with barriers and mutex locks and something like P threads, we've got uh, barrier, we've got, you know, synchronization problems with having to like send messages out to all the different processes and then have those acknowledged and, you know, actually hit the barriers as well with MPI. So, that's going to uh, go ahead and do it for this episode. So feel free, as always, um, check out the work that I'm doing on uh, github.com uh, and my profile at Coffee Before Arch. So github.com slash Coffee Before Arch. We've got all the code for all the other series, including the CUDA one, the C++ Parallelism one, Python, MIPS assembly language, data structures and algorithms. So we looked at this one today, so in here, We've got MPI code. So this is for Gaussian elimination. The cyclic striped one isn't done yet, but we've got the in, we've got the naive uh, MPI implementation of this in here. So like I said, feel free to download this, check it out, play around with it. Let me know if you have any questions. As always, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and I hope you have a nice day.